maybe a bit more than three or four, but anyway, like that. And so we carried some books and the temple would have, you know, whatever books were brought by Western devotees. So Gopal Krishna Maharaj, he came there to India in those days, in those conditions. And you know, if you look at India today, it's just amazing, you know, it's just phenomenal, it's awesome. Just so wonderful how much success he's had in his preaching work. And it was not diff it was not easy for him, it was so difficult because you know, he was not a sannyasi at that time and he was working with people who were sannyasis, plus the fact that he was Indian bodied and they were Western bodies, you know, often these are American guys, you know, <laughs> and they were not very nice to him, you know. They made it very difficult for him sometimes, but he tolerated so many difficulties for Srila Prabhupada's service. He put up with so much inconvenience. I remember he came, I was in Bangalore in 1978 and he came and he stayed there. He was traveling around the different centers and he stayed with us, you know, and we didn't have even proper center or anything. We were just staying in some little temple where they were giving us some accommodation and he came and visited us and he stayed with us. So I was impressed at how he accepted so much austerity on behalf of Srila Prabhupada. He accepted so much inconvenience, so many troubles, to, just to do some service for Prabhupada. And now, of course, we see wonderful temples coming up everywhere. And Maharaj is not only preaching in India, but he's a very important preacher in Russia. His presence is very essential there in Russia. He preaches uh, in many of the cities there in Russia, he has many disciples there. And of course, he's also preaching in places like Africa, Kenya, and uh, then he's in uh, Canada also. And we just heard the lecture coming from Los Angeles. So he travels all these places like Washington DC and so on. He's preaching uh, in many, so many parts of the world. And his preaching is very important, very much appreciated. Uh, it's particularly interesting to note about how he involves himself in book distribution. Of course, in the lecture we were hearing, Maharaj was encouraging so much the book distribution. And he himself distributes so many books. And he has one disciple in Delhi, uh, the one disciple in Delhi, uh, he, he's a very cunning man. <laughs> and uh, he uses his name to get appointments with uh, big managers in the corporate industry. And you know, Maharaj will come and meet them and he doesn't he just get these people to buy one or two books, but he gets them to buy one or two containers of books. You know, Maharaj gets them to buy like 20,000 or 50,000 books at a time. You know, he, it, it's just amazing. You know, you, you wonder how Delhi distributes so many books. Maharaj is the, the real man behind it. You know, Delhi is some, often the number one leading temple in the world. And it's because of Maharaj, he's so uh, resourceful and so enthused and so determined to distribute Srila Prabhupada's books that he will go after his disciple makes appointments in these big corporate industries, Maharaj will go and meet with them and then he will get these people to actually buy 20,000 Bhagavad Gita's or 50,000 Bhagavad Gita's. It's very wonderful, you know. Maharaj is not small time, you know. <laughs> we think one or two books, we're happy, you know. But he sells containers of books at a time. And this is wonderful. And then so many devotees as well. You know, I was in Delhi. I said I went to Delhi in 1975. We were six devotees living there. Now there's so many temples 
It's because Prabhupada said he wanted a temple in every village in Delhi. There's about 15 or 20 villages in Delhi. So they have like that, 15 or 20 temples coming up in different parts of Delhi. And the temples which are already built, you know, like in East of Kailash, very wonderful temple, and uh, Punjabi Bagh, also another wonderful temple. And I just got a mail today, Chitiwadi opening their temple there, Chitiwadi where Prabhupada used to live. And so, and uh, I know also 2020 is uh, Rohini. They're, they plan to open a very big temple in Rohini, which is the biggest subdivision there in Delhi, said to be one of the biggest housing subdivisions in the world, an area called Rohini. There's a big seven floor temple, which is planned to open next year. There's another huge construction project going on in place in a division of Delhi called Dwarka, just near to the airport. A very huge project. So like that, Maharaj, that Maharaj is so busy, you know, he's got so many wonderful projects. And then of course Bombay also, he's overseeing the activities there in Mumbai, Juhu Temple, and working of course also with Radhanath Maharaj is also there in Mumbai. But Mainly it's Gopal Krishna Maharaj, the Juhu Temple, it's Gopal Krishna Maharaj, and then Mira Road also, it's Gopal Krishna Maharaj, and then uh, Karga, the new Bombay project, also there's also Gopal Krishna Maharaj. It's just amazing, you know, it's, it's the preaching which he's done and the number of devotees which he's inspired. I was in Chandigarh also. Chandigarh is another place where Gopal Krishna Maharaj is preaching. Most of the devotees are his disciples. Very nice center. This, this, this year, earlier this year in India, I went to a place called Yamuna Naga. And uh, another big project was initiated there again also under Gopal Krishna Goswami. Someone had left, someone had left the body. but. Before they departed, they made a will, leaving all their assets for the Krishna consciousness movement to construct a temple in a place called Yamunanaka. And so, land is there, and they did the groundbreaking ceremony, and Gopal Krishna Maharaj is involved. He's, so he's doing so much wonderful preaching, bringing so many devotees to Krishna consciousness, leading them. And also maintaining also the book distribution, and at the same time, the most amazing thing, maybe one of the one of the many or one of the many amazing things about Gopal Krishna Maharaj is Mongol Arti, He never misses that every day you will see him on the altar offering the Arti to the deities every morning without fail. Even though he may come in the middle of the night, but Mongol Arti, he'll be there and he'll be on the altar offering Arti. And so it's a, he's a wonderful example for all of us. We should feel very inspired. You know, sometimes people criticize that all oh, these proper disciples, they are lazy, or oh, they don't do sadhana, or oh, they don't do this, or they don't do that. But you just have to look at somebody like Gopal Krishna Goswami and you can see, you, you can't find any fault, you know. He's, he's just a, an amazing devotee. And he's like this because he's so dedicated to Srila Prabhupada. He's so eager to fulfill Srila Prabhupada's mission. So we're very grateful to him. And we also hope one day he will come and bless you all in Singapore. Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Thank you Maharaj I would like to request any senior devotee who want to